Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Uh, sorry about not posting for the last couple weeks. Uh, I've been traveling for work, but I'm back now, so I should be back on my normal schedule. Um, over that time, I had a couple people ask how to connect to Octoprint with SSH or be able to copy files, like a lot of G-code files, over to Octoprint at once. Uh, so I figured I'll make a quick video showing you how to connect with SSH and when SCP uh, so you can actually uh, update or install plugins and then copy over files in bulk. Uh, the process isn't hard, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward, um, but I'll go ahead and walk you through everything you need to know and link to all the resources below. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And before I get started, if you guys haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, guys. So the first thing we need to do is get some software to connect to the Raspberry Pi. If you're trying to SSH, PuTTY is going to be the best option. If you're trying to use uh, SFTP, I like WinSFTP. Uh, I'll go over both of those and link to both of them in the description below. Um, but it really depends what you're trying to do. So for uh, installing plugins and stuff like that, you're going to want to use PuTTY to SSH over. If you're just wanting to update a file really quick or drag uh, G-code files over to Octoprint, you can use WinSFTP and it's just more of a drag and drop type thing. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is download PuTTY. So we go to the PuTTY website, just PuTTY.org. Uh, go ahead and download it. So going here, you have a couple choices. You can either download a full installer, which will keep it installed, or just a executable, uh, which doesn't actually install anything. Um, I typically go with just the executable, so I'm just going to download this. And this is assuming you have a recent Windows machine, 64-bit. Uh, and then the next thing we need is the IP address to be able to connect to. So if we launch PuTTY, uh, that's going to open here in a second. Um, it's going to ask for an IP address. Uh, so if you're connecting to Octopi with an IP address like I am here, we can just go over here and copy this. Uh, if you're using octopi.local, um, you can either try to do an NS lookup on it, see if that resolves correctly, uh, which you can do by opening up a command prompt and just do NS lookup. And then it would be octopi.local. And in this case, it doesn't actually resolve for me because uh, I have security tools blocking some of those, uh, but that's the command that you would run. It would give you back an IP address. Or you can go into your router, uh, find out where your connected devices are. In my case here, um, my Octopi is connected to this access point and it shows me my IP address right here. All right, so with that, we can open up PuTTY, and you have a couple choices here. If this is just a quick one-off thing, you can just put the IP address here and um, just connect to it, or you can uh, create a save session so you don't have to think about it every time. So if you wanted to do that, you can just go ahead and put the IP address up here, and then um, just put something like Octopi, and then hit save. Now next time, if you open this, you'll be able to just click on it like I did and it will open it. The first time you connect to Octopi uh, through PuTTY, you're going to want to accept the fingerprint. Uh, basically, it doesn't know about it, so you have to accept it the first time and then it will save it. So after you connect again, it won't prompt you for this. So just go ahead and accept and then you'll log in with and then you'll log in with um, Pi and the password is Raspberry. Now that is the default username and password. If you connected before and changed the password, you're going to want to use the password that you set up. To change the password, you just want to type passwd and hit enter. It's going to prompt you for the current password, then you can enter the new password. Uh, I'm going to wipe this when I'm done with this video, so I'm not going to change the password, but you would just um, run through the couple prompts that it gives you, then it'll change your password. Uh, for security purposes, the best practice is to change the password. So now from here, uh, the main reason you'd want to connect through SSH is if you're going to install plugins or if you wanted to update a file. Uh, there's a couple things you can check. I'll go over some basic commands here. If you want to see how much space is left on your drives, you can do df-h. That'll give you a list of all your partitions and uh, what's used on it and how much free space is left. If you have a decent size SD card, space isn't going to be an issue unless you're putting a lot of files on here. Um, but if you ever wanted to check, that's what you would do. And then another common command is going to be ls-la. Uh, that's going to give you 
the directory that you're currently in and the permissions for that. Uh, that's useful if you're trying to browse for specific files or anything to update. Uh, and most of the time, like I said, you're not going to be doing much like that here. The only time I really find myself logging in with SSH is if I'm going to uh, install a plugin or something. Any other time, if I'm updating a file, a lot of times it's just easier to do it with WinSCP if you already have that installed. So I don't want to go into too much detail on a lot of the basic commands for Linux. Uh, but if you have any questions or run into any issues, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out. Also, if you think it's worthwhile, I can do a quick video kind of going into more of just Linux basics, kind of going over some of the basic commands that you guys would use. Um, there's enough there to definitely justify a video in and of itself. I would just want to make sure that it's something you guys would want versus me just making it just to make it. And then, like I mentioned, most of the time, if you're coming here, you're going to be installing a plugin or something. Um, that plugin is typically going to be provided uh, from whatever package or uh item you're trying to install. But here's an example of a plugin that you might install. Um, it would just be uh, sudo, which is basically uh, admin command saying that you can be running it as admin, app install, and then whatever package you're trying to install. And then you just hit enter. It's going to prompt you for the password. Again, that's Raspberry unless you changed it. And then it will run through the install there. But in this case, it was already actually installed, so it just said that it's on the latest version. But for the most part, that's really the only reason you need to connect with SSH. So let's go over to WinSCP next. So let's go ahead and close it out of this session and then go over to WinSCP. Uh, in order to close it, you can just hit exit or click the X here. I just like to hit exit though, and that just closes it. All right, so for WinSCP, you'll go to the download site and just download now. And then go scroll down a little bit and then you'll see the actual download. And that should start it. Yep, there we go. Then once that's done, you'll go ahead and launch it. And then this is an install, so it'll run through an installer. Um, so I'm going to install it for all users. Accept. And typical installation is fine. That's all I typically do. You can change it up a bit, but that covers it for most cases. And then if you had saved sessions and putty, like what I just showed you, you can import it. So I'm just going to hit yes there, and that will import the one I just saved. And we'll go ahead and launch one SCP. And then you can go ahead and uh, put your IP address here, your username and password, which is Pi and Raspberry, and then hit connect or login. Uh, because I imported this from Putty, I already have a session here. Uh, so I would just launch this and then I'll ask for the username and password, or I can just hit edit and then put the username in, and then it will just prompt me for the password. So I'll just do Pi. And if you want to put the password in there, you can as well. I typically don't. Right, so then I'm going to go ahead and hit login. It's prompted me for the password, and we're connected. All right, so the first time you connect, you're going to want to enable hidden folders. So a lot of the folders you might be looking for will start with a dot, which means that by default it's going to be hidden in Linux. So if you go up to Options, Preferences, and then go down to Panel, click Show Hidden Files, and then hit OK. And now it's showing the rest of the files that were in here. If you go under .octoprint and under Uploads, uh, this is where the upload files would go if you uploaded a uh, 3D object as an example. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll show you. All right, so here I've got a quick slice of Benchy, just the G-code file. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag that over and hit OK. Now it's going to upload it here as your user. For individual files, this isn't the most efficient way. You can do it through the UI, but if you're dragging a lot of them over, you can just select however many you're dragging over and just drop them. And then if you go over to Octoprint now, here under Files now, you'll have that G-code file. Um, like I said, you can do uploads this way as well, but if you're doing like a bulk upload or a lot of them, uh, you can go ahead and go the other way just using WinSFTP or something like that. All right, and then the other thing you can do is uh, edit files here. So if you go back up a directory, let's say you wanted to edit, edit one of these YAML files, uh, you just go ahead and open that. 
and it will bring it up and you can make your changes and go ahead and save it. Um, basically, it'll be a save icon here. Or you can drag this over to whatever desktop or folder you have open and then make your changes through your normal process and then send it back over as well. Uh, so there's a couple options there. Just make sure that you're using an editor like Notepad++ or something if you're not using the built-in one here because you can run into issues or add special line endings for Windows and it will mess up things on Linux. Uh, so just make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing. Most of the time you're not going to have to do this type of stuff. The main reason why I wanted to create this video was to really show you how to install plugins with a little bit more detail and how to upload files in bulk. There will be some other use cases, but most of the time for Octoprint, that's really all you'll need to do. So that covers the process of actually connecting to your Octopi with WinSCP and Putty. Uh, actually, the video ended up being a little bit longer than I thought it, but there were a couple points I thought that was worth mentioning, especially showing the hidden files and stuff inside of WinSCP. Um, but like I said, overall, the process isn't difficult, and if you're uploading a bunch of files in bulk or something like that, uh, just connect with WinSCP and drag them over. And if you're trying to install a plugin, uh, just go ahead and connect with uh, Putty using SSH. If you have any questions about anything I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.